Okay, in this section we'll be talking about impact factors, which are normally quite important when choosing a journal to publish in. What is an impact factor? Well, in very broad terms, it's the average number of citations that articles published in a given journal get. So, for example, a journal that has on average articles that are highly cited is said to have a high impact in the field compared to a journal that has articles which are almost never cited, which, which makes sense. So uh, let's take a look about how you would find uh, impact factors. There are many different ways to find the impact factors for a certain journal. One is to go through Web of Science. Another is to go through the Get It button, which appears in many of our different databases. If you click on More Information from the Get It menu, um, you'll get to the impact factor. But the way I'm going to go is to go directly to the database that all these other ways connect to. It's the source that has all the impact factors for all the journals. And it's a database called Journal Citation Reports. And it's in our database list. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that in our database list, Journal Citation Reports. And I come to this opening screen. You can see here at the top it says ISI Web of Knowledge. And that's because ISI, that company that also makes Web of Science, makes this database of impact factors. And in fact, only journals which are included in Web of Science, that's about 12,000 journals, have an impact factor at all. At first that might seem unfair, you know, what about journals that aren't in the database? Don't they have an impact? But it's not arbitrary, that's important to keep in mind, because what happens is if there's a new journal, for example, and it starts to get cited by uh, journals that are already in Web of Science, then eventually that journal will become part of Web of Science because they monitor that, add the new journal, and then it will get an impact factor. So this is not a static list, it's a dynamic list designed to always include all the journals that have an impact on, on the field. So let's take a look about how you would find the impact factor for a certain journal. Um, from this screen I can view a whole category of journals by subject or a specific journal. Let's say I'm interested in publishing in the Canadian Journal of Cardiology. In that case, I'll go ahead and search for that journal here. And I'll type it in. Okay. And I get to the screen that shows that the Canadian Journal of Cardiology has an impact factor of 2.2. But at this point, I don't really know what that means yet. Is that high or low? I have to go a little bit deeper um, to find out what that means. So I click on the title, Canadian Journal of Cardiology, and get even more information about the journal. Included here is exactly how they, how they calculated the impact factor. It shows here the number of articles published in uh, these two years, and then the number of citations to those articles in the year 2010. So that gives you an idea of how they get this average. It's, it's pretty simple, really. And, uh, but as I said, what does that really mean? It has 2.2 as an impact factor. The only way to, to compare that to, um, to, for it to mean anything is to compare it to other journals. So you know, is this relatively good or relatively bad? So let's take a look. Cardiac and cardiovascular systems is the subject that this journal is included in. There's a scope note here if you want to know what that subject area includes. And uh, then if you click on, click on View Journal Summary List here, you'll actually come to a list of journals in that category. This is all the journals. But again, it doesn't tell me that much because it's alphabetical. So I have to resort this list by impact factor. And then I find out that Circulation is the highest impact factor journal in, in this area with 14.4. And if I look a little bit further, I would find that my journal, Canadian Journal of Cardiology, is actually in the bottom third of the list. Now, what this means, um, I think, is, is a little bit up for interpretation, depending on your point of view. But one thing to keep in mind is that any journal that has an impact factor and is in Web of Science is certainly a, a valid scientific journal that, that has an impact on the field. So it doesn't mean that, uh, certainly doesn't mean that articles published in that journal are of bad quality. It doesn't really mean anything about the quality of the articles in the journal. Um, it's just some kind of relative measure of the of the average impact of the articles in the journal, and you have to kind of take that for what it's worth. But um, 
In any case, this is the way you would identify the, the top impact factor journals in, in any particular subject area. Now, impact factor is not uncontroversial. There are certain people, there are certainly people that, that question its validity or how it's used. And we included one article on this page under references, which, uh, which talks a little bit about some of, the, some of the controversy behind impact factor. Also, there are other um, companies that have made competing products to this, one could, one could say. Um, different ways about looking at journal or article quality. Um, and we don't really get into them here, but it might be good to know that there are other other methods that are used. It's just that this is the method that's used um, officially at, at many different universities uh, across the world, including Karolinska Institute, um, to look at journal quality. So, uh, with that being said, it's time to go, go on to the rest of this section, which is an exercise where you take a journal or a number of journals that you're interested in, and go through the process that I just did where you look up, find out about their impact factor. Okay, time to get to work.